As one looks out of the sea, at this huge vastness of blue that extends as far as the eye can see, one cannot help but wonder what lives out there. What creatures, big and small, weird and wonderful, roam these waters. Imagine a world full of adventure and discovery. Today, that adventure begins. We will learn about some of the creatures and their relationships with their environment and be introduced to some important biological concepts that are key to ocean life. But first, we need to get ready to go scuba diving. We need wetsuits to keep warm and masks and fins to be able to see and move in the water. And of course, let's not forget oxygen tanks so that we can breathe underwater. Let's load it all in the boat and get going. Keep an eye on the ride out. You never know what you might find. It's time to get in the water. Fins on, mouth tight, and get ready. We are descending down onto the reef below. Reefs are underwater ridges of rock and sand, often covered in corals and seaweeds, and is the home to a variety of species. All animals, including all underwater creatures you see, are either vertebrates or invertebrates. Vertebrates have a backbone or spinal column. Bony fish, or most of the fish you come across are vertebrates because of their bony structure. Other vertebrates include sharks, rays and dolphins. Even though we are very different to fish, humans are also vertebrates because we have a spine. Invertebrates have no backbone or spinal column. They include shrimps, nudibranchs, starfish, crayfish and many other species. This harlequin shrimp is an example of an invertebrate. You can see by its anatomy that it has no bones, just an exoskeleton covering. All animals have a special relationship with their environment. This cleaner shrimp may look like it has a death wish, but it actually has an agreement with the moray eel. It is called a symbiotic relationship where both species will benefit in some way from each other. Here, the cleaner shrimp is cleaning the parasites and dead tissue off the eel. The eel gets a healthy clean and the shrimps are able to feed so they both benefit from the relationship. Another example of a symbiotic relationship is the two-barred damselfish and sea anemone. The damselfish will chase away any fish hunting the anemone, as well as fertilize it with their feces. In return, damsels use the anemone's stinging tentacles as protection, since they are immune to the stinging themselves. But not all relationships are symbiotic. These fish are using the ragged tooth shark as cover from other prowling sharks. Only the fish benefit in this relationship and is called commensalism. The final type of relationship is parasitic, when one of the species is harmed in the process. An example of this is the isopod, which attaches itself to a fish and feeds on its blood. In order to survive, all creatures have had to adapt. Adaptation is when the species becomes suited to a habitat during the process of evolution. It can take many generations for the adaptation to take place. The types of adaptation can include their swimming styles, hunting methods, and defensive mechanisms, not to mention their physical appearance. This is the ghost pipefish, which uses its shape and color to camouflage itself from predators. See how it appears as just another piece of loose coral, sweeping in and out with the surge and currents. Pipefish are similar to paperfish. Can you see it? It takes a trained eye to spot these sneaky creatures. Let's see how good you are at spotting them. Can you find this long-snouted pipefish?
What about the head of the scorpion fish? Most of the enjoyment of scuba diving and snorkeling comes from paying attention to the small things because there's often a lot more than meets the eye. Another species to look out for are nudibranchs. Nudibranchs or sea slugs also use their color to their advantage. Some use neutral colors to blend in with the environment. Others do the exact opposite and use bright colors to attract attention and warn predators that they are either distasteful or poisonous. Other creatures have developed very different swimming styles like raisin skates which flap their wings to glide or jellyfish which pump water in and out to propel themselves forward. But not all species have had to adapt and change. Sharks are an example whose structure and hunting habits have remained very similar over thousands of years. So, you have now seen just a glimpse of the magnificence of our oceans and have learned a few scientific lessons about how the ecosystems function. If we are to appreciate this unique universe with its funny looking fish and small long-legged invertebrates, we must first understand the environment and how each species survives in it. Only then will we appreciate how lucky we are to have the sea on our doorstep.